Hi everybody. Uh, good morning and um, hello. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen a lot of you and um, just wanted to have another chat this morning with you. Um, just information, also just kind of an encouragement to you. Um, this week, uh, obviously I'm going to do the devotion again. Next week will be Shane and uh, so we look forward to hearing from him next week and I wanted to update you on some of the happenings. Um, we've met uh, numerous times in March uh, as elders just to talk about what's going on and strategize on how to to minister at church to you guys and to each other and um, learn how to do Zoom meetings on the internet. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we're, we're just, re you realize that we're, we're canceling services and we're going to wait and meet um on Tuesday at four for a monthly meeting, which we hope by then the governor will have uh, given his announcement on whether to extend the isolation time or not, um, which we really anticipate that he will. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, we'll get back to you next week with information on that. Just look for that in the email news from the church. And, um, so yeah, we're, we're tackling a lot of subjects and um, issues that are coming up and how to move forward as, as a body. Um, so a lot of neat ideas are coming out. out. I hope that you're enjoying um, phone calls from p folks, um, kind of a care network that we've set up. And yeah, I just really want to make sure that um, we stay connected somehow. And also just encourage you to reach out uh, to each other as well. Think of the friends that you you have at church that you'd maybe ch check in with uh, on a Sunday morning and yeah give them a call and uh, even though I realize that the uh, video chats are kind of a uh, less personal way uh, it's what we have right now and, and it does it does work um, to a degree uh, as Jeff McPherson put it they, it's adequate which I agree <laughs> it's not the best it's not preferred but um, I just encourage you to, to reach out to each other. Um, keep your friendships going and encourage each other and all that. So um, I will go ahead and move into a devotion right now. And I think there'll be other announcement stuff at the end too. But uh, I just wanted to continue um, since we are kind of in a different era, kind of a crisis time in our church, in our nation, in our country, um, in the world, actually. Um, that's what I meant to say. But uh, I talked last week about all the, the trials and tribulations, distress, and that how God is is there um, for us, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we, we read some of Romans 8, and uh, there's a whole list of, of tough things that um, Paul was encouraging people to not give up hope um, because their hope is in Christ and, and, and God. And so I wanted to pick up on that today too, um, and also to just remind us and, and spend some time thinking about that this is Easter uh, season. Um, we are in the the coming up to the Holy Week next week, and um, Shane will be talking on on that uh, as well. Um, but I plan on uh, doing a, a short uh, message on Easter Day, if perhaps, which I'm assuming we won't be able to meet, um, just to to celebrate our our big day. As Pastor Phil said, it's our Super Bowl Sunday <laughs> of Christianity, and and yeah, so. For today, I just wanted to start gearing your mind toward um, Easter week. And um, so I uh, wanted to just kind of do a, a nutshell, kind of a, a story of what this was about. And so coming up here this weekend, um, Jesus and the disciples um, were making plans to head into Jerusalem. And uh, this is the this is the weekend where where the hosannas were were proclaimed. And uh, if you read the story in, in Matthew, uh, you can read it in any of the gospels. It talks about people did recognize that Jesus was a king of, of sorts, although they didn't really understand what his kingdom or what how he was going to be the king. Um, and that was all unfolding before their eyes. Um, he uh, was riding on a donkey um it, it was all part of scripture prophecies um they were shouting hosanna and just as a reminder hosanna means uh come and it, it means save and uh it, it 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 the the actual uh term 
kind of implies an urgency or a or a, a the need was there for a king to to rescue them. And this is the this is the p picture I wanted to paint too because it's it was a time of occupation of Rome and they were they were uh, basically taking over their culture. They were taking over their uh, religious systems and putting a lot of constraints on it. They were also taking their money. Um, so there was a time of oppression here. And so uh, for this hope of a Messiah to come was huge for them. Um, so to back up before this, though, I mean, we, we have to consider all of what had happened in the past three years. Um, well, they knew that Jesus was born, um, but when he when he came, um, when John the Baptist was was uh, preparing the way for the Messiah, um, he entered into his three years of ministry um, to tell about what this this new kingdom was about, what his reign would be, and uh, so here he had a band of, of people, and it, there were twelve disciples, and there were a whole bunch more that would follow. But um, those those folks had been going through a lot of stuff; they had been seeing miracles uh there's been healings of, of bodies there's people that were raised from the dead um people were delivered from demons um the they jesus taught them how to pray in different ways um how to love in different ways love began to look like something way different than they they had imagined and what they had been uh learning um so uh yeah they they were learning that to be the greatest, you have to be the least, and to be to serve people above your above yourself. Um, Jesus confronted the 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 Pharisees, the religious system of the time, where they had taken um, the law and made it just burdensome. And uh, so he was he was addressing so many different areas in in life that as they knew it at that time. Um, he you know that three years was just a time all all the time together. Um, and I talked about this um, months back about uh, discipleship and how what that must have been like for them. I mean, this this is a, a, a relationship building thing. You know, Jesus loved them. Um, he he told, told them they were his friends. Um, it was amazing, uh, uh, transformative thing in their lives. Um, so uh, so that's kind of the stage. Um, oh, and even from then. At the end of the time, Jesus started sending the disciples out to to witness to of his of who he was and stuff. He sent them out in pairs, and they were out uh, talking to different towns and evangelizing and stuff. And so that's the stage that we're we're in. He's trained these these people to be his witness um, and, get, and give them a, a job to do. And then um, they he starts telling them that he's going to leave them. Um, incredible, incredible. He, he starts t telling them that he was gonna, he's gonna be die, he's gonna die, he's gonna be put on a cross, and um, go back to his father. Um, all those things were just rocking them. I know, I know. As we read in the in uh, uh, John, in the starting the, about the twelfth chapter or so, starts to outline what the process was that Jesus took them through um, to prepare them for, for uh, his leaving. So as you can imagine, there were tons of questions, there were tons of emotions. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I just want to kind of focus on that. And I'm, and I'm kind of going ahead to Good Friday on this, um, but there's a purpose for that. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to focus on you know the Palm Sunday aspect, of, but I'm going to fast forward to Friday. And Friday was uh, we're just saying is the um, the time where he was betrayed and taken in by the the leaders to be um, put to death, basically. But um, leading up to that, Jesus was still preparing his people um, and gave him a lot of promises, gave him a lot of assurances. A lot of things that we still hold on to um, in our faith, in our belief, and in, in practice, in our um, being together. Um, so it's very packed. And I said this last last week. Uh, this is not going to be a, like a half an hour sermon. Um, this is about me just kind of pointing you in a direction, and because because we all need to be going in Easter thinking about what this is about. And so 
I just direct you to go to the Gospels, go to the story of Easter. Um, each account has a little bit different nuances and focuses and stuff. Um, and I'm focusing on John today, but as far as uh, your daily studying stuff, you got to go in and you got to check this out. It's it's amazing. Kind of kind of get in the story and 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 understand what this is, what what the disciples were going through. Um, because it has a lot to do with where we're at too, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, so I pick up in the upper room. Um, they had been uh, Jesus had had broken the bread. They had had the Last Supper, um, so they took communion, and Jesus told them about the the bread and the wine, and um, how he was going to be uh, dying for them. Uh, this is when this is the account of when Jesus washed their feet. Here he was. He was he was being the servant. Um, the master washing the feet of, of the servants and um, just kind of blowing blowing apart <laughs> what we think of, of authority and the hierarchy and stuff like that um, or the world thinks. Um, so the, the next feature of this evening too um, was that he told of the betrayer. He told of what Judas was going to do and um, so this is a very sobering time in a, in a lot of questions. The disciples were just like, oh, what, who is this? What's going to happen? Um, and so after this, it, as you read on, it, Jesus goes into uh, more preparation time. And it's like a big discussion if you read through it. When I, when I looked at it, it looked like, so the disciples were asking clarifying questions. Um, they're trying to understand, and they even got to a point where you talk in, in, in parables and stuff. Can you talk clearly, essentially? And, and Jesus shifts into just talking directly about stuff, and we're going to kind of pick up it at that point. But, um, yeah, he, he told them a lot of things at this point. I just wanted to kind of go through some of those. Um, and so if you look, uh, I'm going to start at... Chapter 13, uh, there's just way too much to cover, but some of the big things is um, that he's commanded them to love one another. As I have loved you, you should love each other. Um, that's how you're going to know, how people are going to know that you're my disciples. Um, he talks about uh, not letting your heart be, tr be troubled because um, of, of the news that he was giving, and that he was preparing a place for them. Um, he went into uh, like talking about... Um, the father relationship that he has with with God, and and um, that they're one, that he that God loves him, and he loves God, and and um, he's inviting them into that relationship, um, and he says to abide, abide in that love. So there's a lot of just you know he says I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, he sets up his authority. He sets up um, uh, the the abiding passages um, that in me um, so it's about a life that is plugged into him as the source um, in contrast to what I talked about last last week with um, the flesh and walking in the flesh versus walking in the spirit and the, if, if you look in scripture each each of those categories have a list of what to look for and so um, when you boil it down as far as living it, living your life out, um, you can go look at those lists and say, oh man, I'm doing that. Or, oh man, praise God, I'm doing this. He's, you know, it's exciting to be able to, to live his life out. Um, it, it feels good. It feels good inside when we know that we're being obedient, um, which was another thing that he said to the disciples in that, in that conversation. Um, this is the place where he also said, um, you are my friends. Um, you're not my servants, you're my friends. Um, that's in uh, chapter 15, verse 14. And that's it's it's in the context of being obedient and being in him. Um, um, so the other thing that's really crucial to this too, this discussion was his um, uh, introduction. And he might have spoke of it before, but uh, he really starts talking about what the Holy Spirit is is for. And that it's it's to their advantage that the Holy Spirit comes, and that He kind of says what the Holy Spirit's going to be doing. He's going to be convicting of of uh, sin. He's going to be um, telling about righteousness, and He's going to be judging as well. Because Jesus said He didn't come to judge; He came that people might be saved. And so, there's just a huge amount of of con 
content with this this uh, this discussion um, that Jesus was having with them. So I just really, again, I'm going to say it, go back through and just read through it. It really does talk about a lot of pertinent things for who we are and how to be his followers and in, in, in the mission that we need to be on to as believers. So it's pretty exciting. Um, it's, it's tough too, because you know that it is a, a preamble to his death and, and the, the anguish that he's going to go through. And, um, I just, yeah, the anguish, anguish is one thing, but it's also a promise of that he's going to do, uh, he's going to conquer. And, and, uh, I talked about that last week because, um, I was in Romans eight and Paul talks about we're more than conquerors in, uh, uh, in Christ basically, um, in, in his love. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this more today. I, God just kind of put this on my heart, and um, it's it's the classic passages that we know, and I'll just read through it. It's in um, John 16, verse 30, 32 and 33, and it was after the disciples said, Oh, now you're talking clean, uh, clearly, and we understand. We believe that you came forth from God. And then actually 31 says, and Jesus says, Do you now believe? And then he goes on and says in verse 32 and 33, Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you will have peace. In the world you have you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So unpacking this a little bit, um, I just wanted to point out a few things uh, that are pretty striking. Obviously, I went to the verse because he talks about tribulation. And yes, we are. We are in a tribulation right now. Um, this would be the famine, or not famine, but a, a disease or pestilence kind of thing. Um, but there's there's uh, directions on how to deal with that, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But first thing I wanted to point out is like, it's, it's amazing. I didn't even do this on purpose, but it's he says, Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and some some uh, translations say each to his own house and you're gonna leave me alone and so here we are we're in our own houses but that's kind of a just a side interesting thing but the thing I wanted to focus on on this was that it, this talks about and and you're gonna be scattered and you're gonna leave me alone and then he says, yet I'm not alone because the Father was with, with me. And it just took me right back to what he had just been talking to to them about um, remaining in and, and being in fellowship with God and him and, and um, in, a, in a relationship. Um, it was important. Jesus said, you're going to leave me. We've been together for three years. We've been doing this awesome stuff. The kingdom is being ushered in. Um, it's amazing uh, that your your lives are transformed basically, and yet you won't be alone. Um, and and that was I just, that just struck me. You know we're not, we're not alone because we do have that relationship with Jesus and the Father, and and He loves us. And we just read about that last week. It's nothing can separate us from that love. So it's really cool to kind of realize that in that part of the passage. Um, and then in verse thirty three. He says, the things that I have spoken to you, um, I, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Okay, so uh, Shane's going to talk more about peace next next week, but um, he, I go back to the first part of the verse. These things I have spoken to you. So he's referring back to the big conversation that he just had, the big discussion about all those things. And it, it's kind of like the foundation. It's It's what you need to stand on. Um, and what they needed to stand on. So that's for us too. Um, those things are all all essential to us being victorious. Um, it's because of being in Christ, being in God's love, and understanding that love and living it out. So, um, and then the last part of verse 33: In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So here we have. Basically, it's the contrast uh, in the world. Um, it go, I go back to being in the flesh, you know, being in, in the spirit, 
and Paul talks about yeah, that in Romans uh, 7, just that we're, we're at war with the spirit. I mean, with the, <laughs> with the flesh, yeah. Sometimes we're at war with the, the yeah, I get it. Uh, anyway, it's a battle. And, uh, and there, there comes with that tribulation. And it's whether it's tribulation from within or tribulation from without. It's 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 a struggle, and as I looked at kind of the the Greek uh, in that word uh, tribulation, it implies um, or it's used with the internal focus. So the tribulation is is yeah, it comes from external. Yes, it comes from our flesh, but it, it's about this reference is about the internal struggle that we have to stay strong in the Lord or not, basically, and so. Um, there's a but right after he says, "Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be struggling, but be of good cheer." And and there's if you read other uh, versions of of uh, the scriptures other than this one, this is a New King James version. They'll they'll say rather than be of good cheer, they'll say take courage, uh, have a strong heart, basically. So internally, um, be be rooted, be grounded in in in, in what you know. And what I've done for you, what Jesus has done for him, I have overcome the world. So, and the overcome is is another thing that's, um, yeah, it he's done it. It's finality. I talked about um, last week the more than conquerors, same word, um, conquer, um, but it, there's a finality. That's why they said more than conquerors. So, yeah, I just wanted to encourage you with all that today. Um, and, and I honestly, it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy walk, um, a Christian walk. Um, you could talk to Mary Lynn about me. <laughs> uh, dailies, there's challenges. And so, um, yeah, I just I just wanted to let you know that this is you're not alone in this, um, that we can stand on the word. It's important to be in the word because we need the reminders. Um, Satan is so adept at uh, exploiting our weaknesses. Um there's areas in our life that God wants to get a hold of and, and heal us of, and um, I just I just feel like this this is um, what he talked. This is what he means when when he's building his kingdom. His kingdom isn't just like the kingdom of America. It's the kingdom of us, and and from us, the kingdom is built. Um, it's a kingdom of love, and love is between people and between our God. So. Um, I really just encourage you to pay attention. You know, this this is what I'm seeing. This experience that we're going through as a world is focusing, making people focus down on what's around them. Where there's so many distractions, and this is actually forcing us to look at our lives, how we're treating each other, how we how we rely on, and what we rely on. Um, this this is turning us to God. I mean, it it makes us think about what's important. And our, our families are in our faces. I heard good, great testimonies of, of people being um, just having time to, to love on each other and to be encouraged and be dads to to their kids and and uh, you know be dads, be the leader in the home um, for moms to be, uh, yeah, to love their husbands more because they're around. And I, it's just so many, so many um, positive things that I hear coming from this. And so. I just encourage you, I'm, I'm focusing on more of the negative things just because we do need to be equipped. Um, we need to, to grow and to keep that focus, but don't 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 take it that I'm just being a, a, a fuddy-duddy on all these things, but pay attention to, to what your thought patterns are. Think about um, what you're thinking about, what you're focusing on. Um, we're supposed to be, in, in Philippians, it talks about, um, gosh, I might be getting that citation wrong. But focusing our minds on, on on loving things and good things and all that that list that, that Paul puts out. Um, uh, think about uh, how how you're feeling. Be be more pay more attention to just what's going on inside of you, especially when you're in those relationships with each other. Um, God wants to root out stuff that that's not healthy. It's not loving. It's not whole. And so. That's that's part of the the battle with the flesh that I'm talking about. Just paying attention, and um, those those things are telling us things. If if you remember, I don't know if everybody went through um, the emotionally healthy spirituality course. Um, it 
I'd encourage you to pick those books back up. I mean, this is a time where we can spend more time just focusing on some of the cool things that we learn in here, developing disciplines in our lives. And I oh, hate to say it, but we, we're going to have it take, wait, it takes 21 days to build a habit. Well, we might have that. <laughs> so um, I really just encourage you to look back at the resources you have, stay uh, in the Word, and and uh, just take opportunity through the time to connect with each other, um, uh, share with each other. We're going to be doing, I'm going to, I've got some other ideas for how to, uh, to have more interactive stuff as time goes on. Um, so we put that out to just to invite you to be a part of the process yourself, um, to share with the whole church. Um, and then again, Shane's going to talk next week about, about peace and, uh, explore what that means and, and, uh, where that comes from and stuff. So, that's all I have for net right now. I know this has gone a little longer than I thought it was going to go. But, um, yeah, just be blessed um, as you go through your days. Um, and, Father, um, I pray for your spirit to be working strongly in everybody. Um, I thank you for the body of Christ. Uh, I thank you that um, there are um, things that you have for us to do. Um, this is not a very fun time for us, but there is there is beauty that's being made from it. You, you are working all things for good for those who love you. And so um, even even though we're uh, separate and in our houses, Lord, Lord, I know there's contact times with our neighbors. And Lord, I pray that we could have that focus as well, just knowing that we can be a light even though we're in a limited area. And so I just pray that uh, we would be um, plugged into you, that you would keep us um, from the evil one, that you'd protect us. Um, Help us to learn how to walk with you in, in new ways in, in these new times. And so thanks, God, for your faithfulness. Thanks for your great love for us. Thanks for your mercy that's new every day. Um, we just, um, yeah, I just smile when I, when I think about all your blessings and your greatness. When I consider all of what you've done um, to set up your kingdom through the, the word and uh, through your spirit that's teaching. So, uh we just bless you today, God, and uh, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you soon.